Welcome back. The project I wanted to take on was to uh, add some uh, DCC to a, uh, a DC only uh, locomotive. So I uh, picked up a couple on uh, eBay and um, things went fairly well but not everything didn't go quite as planned. Uh, GP30 is over here and this is a GP35. Uh, I was expecting both of them to be DC only units. The GP30 actually is DC C compatible. Uh, looking for a control board with sound, um, it's a 1955 by MRC does provide sound. It's kind of like this one that I have up here. Um, but you cannot find them. For some reason, uh, I guess MRC stopped making them. Uh, I think it's an exact copy. Uh, this happens to be a uh, 1811. And I think the 1812 board is the same configuration, just different sounds on it. This board is just a touch bit too long to go in here. I was looking to see how I could make that fit and see if I could get it to work. But um, So I've opened it up and kind of checked and looked and haven't quite decided what I want to do yet. The straight DC model, uh, I was looking at doing some milling and whatever and see what I could do with that. I think I'm going to go straight DCC with it. Uh, and I've ordered a... Uh, a TCS uh, 1286 board and it's a small board that fits in either side and you have to run some wires from front to rear and that will make that one DCC. Uh, okay I've split the case on the uh, GP35 and run into a little bit of a problem. Here we have the uh, DCC and the chips right here actually, actually they're here on the bottom, those actually uh, hit the uh, area right in here. <clears throat> so you could take a file and uh, all it has to do is come off probably maybe a, a sixteenth of an inch, take a file. I'm going to actually take a mill and I'll mill a little of that off. Uh, of there, just enough to slide that in and have the chips clear. And that's both on both sides. Uh, the other one uh, is <clears throat> to get wire leads down in here to the uh, to the motor. And here, see if you can see one here. Right there's one of them. So that'll be fairly simple to nip that off and be able to solder right onto it. We've got to get those wires up and out the top here so I'm gonna to have to put another hole in this area here and notch this area so I can get a wire down the back and a wire down the front here so what I decided to do is uh, to unsolder the motor leads from the DCC board uh, and one of those leads is going to be attached here and the other one I'm actually going to put through the motor housing here and solder on the other side of this one and bring them both up around and, uh, and come up through the uh, chassis. Um, the reason uh, I'm going to unsolder, let me get that over here, um, if I can get it, uh, unsolder uh, the two connections for that, it would be easier to put it together and then come back in, get the length I need, and resolder them back on the board. Uh, here Again, if the train happens to run the wrong direction, all you have to do is go back in and disconnect the two wires, swap them, and put those back on. So, Okay, I've uh, done the machine work on this. Uh, you could do this with a Dremel tool or a little time with a file, but I say I've notched this down a bit so that our uh, DCC uh, boards will go in there. Uh, if you're going to clamp this in a vise, uh, there is a ridge down across here. Uh, I used a couple pieces of uh, 80 thousandths uh, before I clamped it in there and also uh, I probably put a shim in the center. Here's the hole for our wires to come out for the motor. So 
let me uh, take this apart and uh, we'll start reassembling it. Okay, I've completed the uh, wiring on the motor. Say I had to take off the ends and you have to take them off very, very short. Um, I took the wires off of the decoder board and this one here is actually attached on the back side. I ran it up around and this one here I'm hoping there's going to be enough clearance to be able to get that wire when I put the shell on uh, the other half. So anyway, so these are the two motor wires. <clears throat> we'll get those up. Don't forget to put your drive shafts back in. Okay, I've got the two uh, framework back together and uh, I've installed the uh, front DCC board. It has a pretty good fit, very nice. Uh, the back one though is uh, fairly loose. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit of solder on there uh, to build that up, fill that gap up a little bit and uh, we'll get that in there. Uh, we have to run the wires back here and these wires will come back up and go back on to their uh, position up front here. Well, I put the uh, GP35 on the programming track and at first I did get a forward light but when I went to the other direction reverse uh, the light did not come on. I went back, it came on. I took it off and looked at it, put it back on the track and then I got nothing. So uh, I did disconnect the um, motor leads from the board and I did support it, applied 9 volts and the motor runs fine. I did check it, it doesn't seem like there's any grounding going on. But I just can't pro get it to program, can't get any CVs out of it. So fortunately TCS has, does have a, uh, a no goof return policy. So I have contacted them and we're going to send this board back in. And we'll pick it up in the next part to see if uh, we can get this one to operate for us. With a little hiccup there on uh, the GP35, I turned my attention over to the GP30. I was able to find an MRC uh, 1955 decoder. So uh, I want to show you how we put that in. And actually the first time I put this decoder in to check it, it did not operate. And what it was was one of the motor contacts was not uh, contacting the board on the underside. So we'll pick it up from there and I'll uh, show you the quick install. Uh, very easy and then uh, a run on the track real quick and some sounds and show you what that looks like. Okay I separated it and uh, I think that this one motor lead that came up here was not uh, making contact so we repositioned that. Put that back together. Uh, got the fuel tank back on <clears throat> and I did notice with the uh, light here I had to trim a little bit out to be able to fit underneath that board. So we'll put the case on it and uh, we will go test it out. Uh, we will get it uh, started up here. I am really very very pleased with this MRC decoder. Um, it's got great sound. I didn't have to use a sugar cube or anything which I probably couldn't get in there anyway. But. Um, There's the lights. Uh, the only question I have, and I have this with a couple of mine, that if I go to uh, step level one, it takes up to about level five before it really starts to to move. That's five, six. This we're about an eight. Now I'm gonna let this train run. Um, horn wise, bell, very good uh, sound. In fact, I'm gonna probably turn the volume down just a little bit. Um, the only question I have, uh, you have like uh, 21 different bells, 22 bells, three different uh, engine sounds, but they don't tell you what they are in the instructions, and I just wish they'd kind of go through and, and 
and tell you. A closing note here, uh, the MRC uh, 1955 board that I picked up for the GP30, uh, I got that off of eBay and it actually came with some paperwork that uh, talks about XL Systems Inc. Uh, may have picked up uh, making the soundboards uh, uh, for them now. Uh, if you have any problems with them, uh, you return them to, uh, to that company. Uh, there is a six month uh, warranty on them, so just wanted to inform you about that. Uh, the boards are off uh, in the mail to uh, TCS, so we'll see how that goes. We'll pick that up in the next episode of trying to get uh, the GP35 to operate. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. We'll look forward to seeing you next time.